Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. Yes, I'm Daniel. I'm Rex, and we are very low on time and energy, but it's fine. I'm full of piss so, and vinegar. Piss. We're gonna start with this one, and then I'm gonna do a clarity reference on independent bottling. And vinegar. And vinegar. Uh, so this is from Cole Brown. Cole Brown, you magnificent bastard. <laughs> So this is an independent release of a Scottish whiskey. They're sourcing it. Uh, this is Charles Muirhead and Sons. It's now owned by a, a Tolliver and, and uh, people also make Highland Mist and things. I oh, Highland Queen, I mean. Highland what? Highland Queen. It's Highland another Queen. budget wine. Okay. So this company, they've got several releases, some of them age statement releases right. in their source. This is not. Okay. This is their uh, budget uh, entry level I like Called the, the Silver Seal. I like the nose. Very apple. It just jumped out of the glass yeah. with apple. Yeah, 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 but the ripe, ripe. Yes, and it has that same sort of grain mustiness that I get in the, the No Age Statement Glen Rothes. Mm -hmm. Like a little bit of a honeysuckle sweetness in that nose, along with that ripe apple. And their line means, uh, I can, I'm not going to pronounce that right. Waxilio, Waxilio Dell. Day, day, I think. I think day. But it's because it's by the help of God. Yes. With God's help. So yeah, very fruity and simultaneously very malty, and but there's it's not so it, it's it's close to being just sweet layer stacked on top of sweet layer it stacked is on top of sweet layer. But it, but yeah, there's this underlying like a malty mustiness that's keeping it from being too sugary desserty. Yeah, yeah. If you don't like monkey shoulder because you feel like there's this weird sort of malty sick kind of note to it, sour note. Yeah, it's in here too. I'm gonna take a sip. Ooh. Oh, it's light. Yeah. It's very pretty. Yeah. Much prettier on the taste. With just uh, oh, there's a little sour tinge in the end. Fli yes. Fru like fruity floral sweetness. And then on the and you get like a little bit of a twinge of like a bitter sour finish. I wouldn't go for this for budget, um, because when I go budget, I go with the budget smoky stuff. Okay. You know, even like um McClellan's Isla version, which is like sure. three year old Bamore, I think. I like those, but this this is nice. It's not bad. It's simple. Mm -hmm. I think it runs in the $30 range. Oh, for $30? Yeah. Yeah, it's a 40% whiskey. Yeah, but you can get Lafroy 10 for $30. Okay, so here's the thing. This is a PSA. Independent bottling. Yeah. For six months, we've talked about American independent bottling. Yeah, yeah. And how there aren't a lot, if any, uh, Amer uh, independent bottling companies in America bottling American distilleries. Sure. Um, I know that single malt whiskeys, the SNWS, they at one point did a Westland, but I also did not know this. Single Cask Nation. They're an independent bottling company. Oh, okay. They're American based. Yeah, right on. Right? And now I've had three or four of their bottles with friends. Right. And it was always scotch. Okay. So I didn't realize that back in the day they bottled an Amer some American releases too. So we have independent bottling in the States. Yes. So when you're talking about independent bottling, you're talking about this void in the American marketplace. Where yes. American craft is not getting represented. Yes. Not where independent bottlers aren't represented. There okay. are independent bottlers. Okay. But where independent bottlers are specifically focusing on American distilleries. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Sure. That's what is happening, but is uncommon. So how many of those are there? Uh, my guess would be, and I keep doing the research, I keep not finding anything. Right. Uh, I'm going to say under a dozen to be safe, but who, who the f*** knows? So, so they it, don't tell anybody. Is it the same thing that we've been saying for the last five months? Yes. Like, let us know. Please let us know. <laughs> if you know of someone, right. and they've released an American independent bottle where they didn't make the whiskey, but they told you the distillery it came from, right. tell us in a signatory style. Now, what I'll also say is, we're trying to build a community that ex explains independent bottling to the American public. Sure. Because this is really common in Scotland and it's not that common in the US. I think the bigger that community gets, the better for all of us and if we can all be talking about each other. Anyway, so that's it. Single Cast Nation right. is kicking ass. Okay. It's cool as so, I'm gonna move on. Mo well, as you move on, I'm gonna say all of this really nice fruity, floral, uh, desserty sweetness, especially on the taste, a little bit more complex on the nose. Um, the more you live with it, the more you lose that really nice, sweet, yeah, uh, beautifulness, and you're left with kind of like this mustiness, which is okay. It's all right. It's fine. It's not a bad whiskey, but there, I've had a lot of whiskeys that I like better, even in the budget realm. 
Okay, I'm pretty excited about this one. This is another independent bottling release, but this time from Joe Turcott. Joe Turcott, you magnificent bastard! Okay, so this is Long Morn. Right. This is a gift, man. Right. This is a f***ing gift. Okay. Joe sent me Long Morn, knowing it's one of my favorites. Yes. This is a 21-year-old Long Morn. Daniel's all about the Long Morns. Yeah. He likes, he likes the Long Morns. I do. I do. Enjoys the Long Morns. Right. Right. So, uh, this 21 is... 21 years old. Yes! This is the Old Malt Cask. This is a company uh, that's Hunter Lang. Old Malt Cask, they do a whole bunch of special editions, Hunter Lang, okay. of really exclusive, rare, and interesting whiskeys. Sure. This, this I'm looking forward okay. to. Okay, so, already the thing that jumps to mind is the nose is beautiful, it's lovely, but 21 years, I'm thinking about 21 years in Scotland compared to what would what we would be getting out of the nose of a 21-year-old whiskey in the States at 50% alcohol, 100 so proof, barrel bitter. it would be just so saturated with that oak, but this is just, at 21 freaking years, this whiskey yes. is old enough to drink whiskey in the States. <laughs> this whiskey is, it's very present, but it's not overwhelming, it's not barrel heavy, you have just enough of just this, this uh, this wood base. There's but, a little bit of a char note in but there. It doesn't present as tannic. No, it's so mild in the nose. Yeah, it's it doesn't, just it doesn't get. But bitter. it's not flat or simple. It's rich. Ah, oh. and then from there, you know, you should be drinking this with me. Maybe we'll, I'll find, I'll pour a sample for him and mail it to him. Mm. It's uh, Roy from Aquavite. Oh uh, yeah, he's a Longmorn guy. He's a big Longmorn yeah, guy he, too. He enjoys the Longmorn. Hell of a guy too. Yeah. We met him in Austin earlier this summer. He's got his own channel, Aquavite. Mm -hmm. There's a V in there. This is the best Longmorn. Uh, I mean, the, the Longmorn 16 old one is this really beautiful, nuanced whiskey. This heads more towards my typically preferred direction of whiskey. Ooh. This has some peppery, spicy richness to it. It's like a, it's like a peppery maltiness. Yeah. Peppery maltiness. And then there is a, yeah, so no one's going to get this reference. There's like star fruit. Like a star fruit juice, a thin layer of star fruit. I know, nobody's gonna get it. A star fruit juice. In and of itself, star fruit is kind of underwhelming, but there's this like sweet, light, um, citrusy layer. Right in the middle. But there's this weird burn on the top of the palate that I'm getting. Like the oil from swallowing this whiskey clung to the roof of my mouth instead of to my tongue. Mm -hmm. Which is bizarre. Mm. You see what I mean? And then approaching it again. The floral elements just dominate. Oh, yeah. The floral element, they just take That's over. Good. They take over, it's beautiful. Do you want to do any comments, or do we want to call it on this one? Uh, my first couple of Whiskey Vault videos involved Daniel and Fireball Jamies, and I realized that these two are a couple of hilarious dumbasses like me and my buddies, <laughs> and that we get along just fine. Says Andrew Hiltz. <laughs> You're our people, Andrew. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that your first episode had me in Fireball pajamas, right. and you kept watching. Uh, so that was probably <laughs> the um, Infinity Bottle episode on the Whiskey Tribe? I don't, no, no, that was here. I wore it in here for like three or four episodes okay. that we shot. Well, then we shot it the same batch that we did the probably. Infinity Bottle episode, the care and feeding of your Infinity Bottle on the Whiskey Tribe episode. Uh, Alexander Klopov. Whatness, or what is, your favorite go-to scotch? You're in a bar, you want to relax and have a good time. What are you reaching for? You know, it's funny, I was thinking, everybody always asks whiskey drinkers, what do you drink, what's your go-to? It's like, man, that's too many options. You can't narrow that down. It's, it's, but I've been paying attention recently, Yeah. and what I'll answer is, if I go to a bar where there's not a good whiskey selection, yeah. I have defaults. Okay. If I go to a bar with a good whiskey selection, I explore. Sure. So if I just go to a random bar, and yeah. they have some whiskey, but you're not guaranteed to get a good selection, sure. I look for Laphroaig. Yeah, they're going to have that in most places. Yeah. yeah just, That's my default. And that is often like the only Isla option. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, Laphroaig, I, I, I Probably for me, it's gonna be, it's gonna be just a Jameson. Ah, oh, you're gonna go Irish. Yeah, because usually, I get that. usually when there's a bar involved, it's because I'm at a restaurant. I yeah. rarely, if ever, just go to like a bar bar. Um, but if I'm at a restaurant, I want something that's gonna pair with whatever the hell I choose to order. Jameson is nice enough to enjoy uh, on its own, um, but uh, it's going to most likely work well with whatever I end up ordering at the table. 
Uh, that being said, if I'm just doing whiskey, then there's a lot of things I'm reaching for, Jameson. Yeah, I got a little bit of a melon note all of a sudden in the nose. Really? Okay. All right. We're not like honeydew. We're melon. not ready. We're circling back. So no, that's, that's fine. We can. End. I'm just gonna back. keep enjoying this. <laughs> Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. You fight me, fight for friends. If you steal, me and steal lovers' heart. And if you drink, may you, you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the whiskey vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.